Hey guys, I wanted to pop in today and talk to you about choosing your first art journal. I put out a newsletter a couple of weeks back and one of the questions that came back was, I'm looking to start an art journal, what the heck do I use? So let's drive into it because you'll have seen all those pretty pages, all the art journals out there that, and you really want to get started, but the choices are so overwhelming. What do you need? How should you use it? All of that sort of thing. So. Although it's the most basic supply, it seems to be an area where people get overwhelmed and freak out and then stop. So we're going to talk about that today. So what should you use? Well, the beauty about art journaling is there are no rules whatsoever. You, you Anything goes. There are no limits. Nothing is off limits. So you don't have to have a dedicated art journal exclusively for making art. And um, yes, there are tons and tons of options out there in the market. You can go out and buy one. But if you start with what you have, you're going to save time, you're going to save money. And, you know, working loose leaf, which is effectively what loads of different sheets of paper are, you can bind them together afterwards or not. And it means you don't have a page in the middle of your journal that you cannot stand. So apart from just general paper, you can use things like brown paper bags, cardboard boxes, Amazon packaging. That's one of my favorites at the minute is those little flat pack Amazon boxes. Well, don't even boxes, envelope type things. They're brilliant. Um, Books can be a really good go-to. We've all got, well, most of us have books. Or an old photo album, maybe. Um, you can use that. The list is as long as your imagination. It's entirely up to you. But if you would really prefer a dedicated journal, I've got a couple of tips for you to get the best bang for your book and a journal that's going to work for you. Now, here's the big deal. Do not buy the cheapest you can get your hands on. The cheaper they are, the poor quality the paper. And we're still... When you start to add wet media to it, they start to fall apart. They just can't handle it. So look for a journal that has thicker cardstock or thicker paper in it. If you want to get really technical and know the ins and outs, I'll not go into a huge nerd out about it, but you want around about 90 GSM for that. Size-wise, whatever takes you fancy, A4, A3, A5, it really doesn't matter in the slightest what size you get. Um, the heavier weight paper means it's going to take more of a beating. So whatever you want to do with it, brilliant. It's more likely to take those extra techniques, maybe a bit of 3D paste on there. It means that it's not going to fall apart as you work through it because there is nothing more frustrating than doing a page that you love, you love the idea of, and the paper won't hold it. For me personally, if you want some specifics, I like Dilutions Journals by Ranger, um, Moleskine Watercolour Journals, or I like to work Lee Sleeve. Either way works. I'm not fussy. I just like being able to create. Now, another thing you'll probably come across as you start to art journal and look through things is people starting to prep their pages, using Jessa to prep their pages. Now, you do not have to do this. It's not a requirement. It's not a must. There is a reason people do it, and I'll come on to that in a bit, but you don't have to. Now, what Gesso does is it creates, a, it creates a protective layer between your surface and your media. So between whatever you're working on, whatever you're putting on top of it, whatever, paint, paper, water, whatever. And what it does is strengthen the paper or the surface so that you can use wet media without damaging the paper, without it seeping into the paper. It does impact your final results in certain terms. A good ground rule is the wetter the media you're going to use, so if you're using things like watercolour or spray inks, the more beneficial gesso is going to be for you. Because any surface you paint on, if it's porous, is going to absorb water. And if you put too much water in, your paper starts to tear because it saturates the paper. Um, so things like acrylic paint really doesn't make a lot of difference because it doesn't have a lot of water in it, so it doesn't damage your paper. Capiche? Good. So moving on. Gesso, don't have to prep your pages, don't worry about it, but it is useful if you're using things like an old book to help strengthen your paper. At the end of the day, if you're just getting started and if you want to just get started, use what you've got. Serial cardboard, packaging, whatever, it does not matter in the slightest. That's the point. Art journaling has no rules. There is no right or wrong way to do it. There's no right or wrong way to create. You don't have to have that dedicated art journal. You can always upgrade. You might find that you don't like doing your art journaling and then you've spent 20 quid on an awesome book that's got tons of blank pages in. Yeah. So whatever you want to do, you can do it. 
just use what you've got lying around. So I hope this helps you in your art journal journey. If you want a bit more information about starting an art journal, what kind of supplies you need and some of the basics, I've written a blog post about The Naked Truth and that's up in the comments so you can go over and read that. It's full of really useful information and I'm trying to take away the overwhelm or you having thousands of products that you wind up either not using or hating. So I will see you next time. Uh, pop up at the blog, have a look, let me know what you think and if you've got any questions just pop them in the comments below and I will get back to you as and when I can. Take care.